morning. Good morning. Welcome as we come together on this Pentecost Sunday as we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit uh, and what is often viewed as the birthday of the church. But I'm sorry we don't have a birthday cake today. Maybe next year we'll do that. We do continue to pray for all those who are listed in your bulletin. Uh, we give thanks this day uh, for the marriage yesterday or the wedding ceremony for Lauren Icken and her now husband, Jared Sweeney, and we rejoice with them uh, on, that, uh, on their uh, new, uh, new life together uh, as they head into the future. Is there anyone else that we should be especially mindful of in this morning's worship? As always, I invite those who are joining us online to please uh, let us know that you're there with a thumbs up or, or some other emoji uh, or with a comment in the feed. Those who are here present, I invite you to stand as we begin our worship as we are called together into God's presence. The day of Pentecost is here. We are transformed into God's family. Spirit Come, Spirit of Adoption. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Spirit of Peace. And calm our trembling hearts. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Breath of God. And overturn our conventional lives. Come, Holy Spirit. We often do not stop often enough to listen to the still speaking voice of God. And like the people of Jerusalem long ago, we often misunderstand the Spirit's movement among us. And so in the silence and stillness of this moment, let us draw near to God and listen. Let us confess together. We confess to you, Renewing Spirit, that we confuse unity with uniformity and diversity with divisiveness. We speak and behave as if being a part of your family means assimilating others to our way of living. We deny and destroy the beauty you created in each person. We long to change these patterns, O Creator, but we do not know how. Teach us to value challenge, Help us to see strength and difference, and empower us to build your kingdom in creativity and love. Amen. Hear the good news. God's Spirit has been poured out upon all flesh, and we have been made one. We are no longer scattered or divided, but gathered together to build up the kingdom of God. Receive the gift of God's everlasting love and grace, given in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join in our opening hymn.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. One time, I dreamt that I was the goalie for the U.S. Olympic hockey team, which was really funny because, one, I don't know how to play ice hockey, and number two, I'm not a very good skater at all. I don't know why. We almost won, but in my dream, we, we just couldn't do it. I'm not sure why I dreamt that dream. I never thought about ever being a hockey player, but sometimes our dreams are kind of weird. But now there, there are other dreams that they are like waking dreams, things that we hope for that we dream about happening, all right? So they're, so they're our day-to-day -day dreams. So do you guys have any of those day-to-day -day dreams? Like what are some things you hope for coming up? Anything? No hopes, I know, I don't believe that. Hoping for the end of school, or for vacation. Maybe hoping for a trip someplace, anything? How about you all out there? Anybody else have hopes, things that they hope for coming up? I want to go bowling again. Huh? I want to go bowling. You want to go bowling? It's so super rapid. Okay. Others? Anybody else have dreams or hopes? Come on, people. I'm hoping my vegetable garden grows well. You hope your best vegetable garden grows well. Good. Anybody else think of anything? Peace for everyone. Peace, peace. <clears throat> so sometimes our, our hopes or our dreams are, are very specific things, like I hope our vegetable our farms grow up, or sometimes they're bigger, like hoping for peace for other things, that we dream about things sometimes being different than they are. But we can also dream about maybe what you're gonna what you're gonna be when you grow up, or what you're able to do maybe in a few years, like maybe a few more years driving, right? It's still quite a few years, right? So dreaming about those kinds of things. So I have a book, I'm going to have something for you to look at it in Sunday school, and I know it's probably a little young for some of you, but it's called I Am God's Dream. And it talks about how we are God's dream, that we are God's dream, and some of the things she talks about is 
So I love who I am, the deep inside, so quirky and curious, creative and kind. Right? That, that I'm messy and clumsy, yet God calls me a treasure. So that we're God's dream, that God's writing my story, something good and not boring, that I'm here for a purpose and each day is worth exploring. To think about how God, what's God's dream for us, and that we're already created in God's image, and that God loves us, but how we are also part of God's dreams and hopes for the world. So to go along with that, we we'll each get one of these, which is an activity kit that you can use during the summer. And so like one of the things on the final page is I have extras of, it says you are God's dream that you can color and that you can give out to others to let other people know too that we are all God's dream. Right? So I will give that um, to you all to take with you. But first I think we all need to be woken up a little bit. So we're doing Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. So we'll do the Alleluia this time and the congregation will do the praise and the awards. When you say your part, you stand up unless you are physically unable, truly physically unable to do it. And then you can just raise your hands. All right, are you guys ready? Suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as a fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under the heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound of the crowd gathered and was bewildered, but each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans, Arabs, in our own language we hear them speaking about God's seed of power. Our all are amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk. These are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, that this is what was spoken to the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. I will show portents 
in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to, to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please read the next reading from Philippians. I get a second. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say rejoice. Let your gentle, gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let us request, but let your request be known to God. And the peace of the God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples and to us, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I am not one who normally remembers my dreams. Uh, they're kind of there vaguely when I first wake up, and they, they say you really should try to write them down right away. But that would involve much too much functioning for me first thing in the morning. <laughs> But sometimes I do wish I could remember my dreams because they seem so vivid at times. I kind of remember that aspect of them, that they're so vivid. And usually they involve something that had happened to me or that pieces kind of come together from my day-to-day -day life. And I wonder, maybe this was some way to figure out things from my life. Or maybe it's just trying to win the, you know, pretend I play hockey and was a goalie for the U.S. hockey team. I don't know. But our, our sleeping dreams are one thing. Our day-to-day -day dreams are something else. They are our hopes, what we look for in our lives. And we have maybe lots of hopes for ourselves, for things that we hope to accomplish or we dream about accomplishing. Sure, I would love to win a million dollars and be able to not have to worry about money for myself or for the congregation. That would be nice, right? That we wouldn't have to worry about that. But different kinds of hopes. <laughs> Uh, Peter uses the, the words from the prophet Joel, young men will see visions and old men will dream dreams. It wasn't just about the individual dreams, it was a sense of community of what their hopes and dreams were for their community of faith, for the people of God, for God's dream for us. Martin Luther King Jr.'s famous speech is, I have a dream. Not a dream about himself, but what we could be as a country or as a world. That where there would be places where, where all people would be judged on, the, on their character rather than the color of their skin. And unfortunately, that hasn't always in all places come true. Have dreams of what God's world could be really like when there aren't any shootings or killings where people don't act in bitterness or hatred towards one another, where people are accepted for who they are or who they love, where we can go and know that we can trust the person across from us, whether we know them or not. We hope hopes and dream dreams and think about the ways in which our world could be, if only. God's Spirit poured out upon all people, 
Now, there's lots of really dramatic scenes in Scripture. I think that's why there's been movies made about particular passages of Scripture in the past, but this is one I don't think they've ever made that I've seen a picture of. It's the, the tongues of fire above their heads and violent winds flowing about and upsetting everything where everyone can now speak another language. Wouldn't that be great? I wouldn't have to do Duolingo anymore. Right? I could just be able to speak whatever language I want. Some people compare it to the Tower of Babel, where in the beginning of Genesis, the people tried to become like God or wanted to reach up to God, so they kept building this tower higher and higher, and God said, you ain't God, and confused their languages. But this wasn't bringing back to one language. And instead, it used the languages of the day to preach the gospel of good news. That it wasn't about what people spoke or how they spoke, but what was their message. People had gathered from all over for the Pentecost celebration. We think of it as a Christian celebration, you know, like many things, it has its roots in Judaism. It was a, a, a harvest festival. And so what this was one of the festivals that people would come from all over, from all these wonderful places that Ralph got to read about. I'm sorry, this is one of those weeks. Usually this is when confirmation falls and the confirmation students have to do it, so they got off the hook this year for it. But all these wonderful places that if we were trying to overlay this biblical map over today's map, it would be places like we know of Syria and Egypt, but also Iraq and Iran and Turkey and Greece and parts of Italy, that it would be in that region. Places often that cause us to be more fearful than anything else. Places of war, and there's even a sense, if I kind of looked at it, it might even be parts of Ukraine and Georgia, if I'm knowing my geography fairly, not really well, but it's in those. A places where there continues to be conflict and fear driven. But it was for all those places that the message there, as well as across the world, as Paul spread it throughout the land, that needed to hear that message of, God, of God's good news to present God's dream for the world to all people. Of God's dream that all people would know of God's great love for them because of Jesus who died on the cross and rose again to say that death was not the final say. And that from the things that are dying or are bitter or are hateful in this world, that new life can arise from that. That God can bring, can resurrect the places in our world that are struggling. And that hope can burst forth from that. Even after fires have scorched the land, it doesn't take long until green begins to appear again. And even after places have been through difficult, difficult times, they begin to see the ways in which they can bring new life. And think about the, the end to apartheid, that one of their, their things that they tried very hard to do was then have what they call the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, where it named the, the hardships of those times, it named the sins and the evil that they had experienced for so many years, but that from that, that wasn't the final say. It wasn't the death of that, but new life and reconciliation and naming the truth, naming the hardship, but growing out from that. God dreams dreams for our world. Wants so much more than what we have around us. And that if God's, as God's people, the Spirit pours down upon us. We may not always have those dancing tongues. We may not always feel the Spirit. But God's Spirit is still in us and can work through us as we interact with people day in and day out, no matter where we go. Some may go as missionaries to other places, but you are sent as God's missionaries today into our community here. To whoever you come into contact with this week, God has sent you there. God's Spirit is with you there as you go into the world. God's Spirit is there to help you to, speak, to preach, to proclaim those words of grace and hope. Maybe not in words of Scripture, unless those come to you, and God gives those to us when we need them. But most certainly in words of hearing and compassion, of looking beyond my own wants and needs and hearing where someone else is coming from, hearing their stories, 
hearing where they need to hear the, hear the grace of God in their midst, to put myself aside and listen and pay attention. There's been things going on in one of our other synods out uh, west this, this for a while, and things have been really difficult, and I was watching one of their, their synod assembly, and there's a lot of hurt there going on, really around the issues primarily of racism. And people, some people heard it, and some people didn't. And there were acts even of violence against one person there too, not, nobody really got hurt, but scared. But it is starting that process there to begin some healing because things were named out loud, even when they were difficult to hear. And it is a long time in coming, and it's going to take a long time for healing to happen there, as well as across our world, as we see issues of racism continue to spring up everywhere. But as we name them, we name what not only what is wrong, but what God's hope is for our future, for our lives together as God's people. Pentecost is the birth of the church, the Christian church. But it is the ways in which we are reminded that as Jesus ascended into heaven, we were not left alone. That we come before our God knowing God's spirit can work in and through us as we open ourselves up to God's presence. As we look at the world through God's eyes, what God's dream is for this world, not my own. And so we look at the world to know not only that we are part of God's dream, but the world is a part of God's dream. And God's spirit can work in and through us now and always. As for this that we do proclaim, thanks be to God. And we stand as we sing our next hymn. bold to proclaim our faith as we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Confidence in your abundance, O grace, O Lord, we pray for the church and the world and all those in need. Gracious God, on the day of Pentecost, each one heard your word in a language that we could understand. May we not be obstacle between your word being proclaimed and received by those hungry for it. Transforming Spirit. Hear our prayer. The giving of the Holy Spirit is a cosmic event, encompassing not only all people, but the whole universe you have made. Give us a vision as wild as we can handle, that we never set our sights too small in carrying out your work of your kingdom. Transforming Spirit. Hear our prayer. As the church celebrates its birthday, we give thanks for our worshiping community, for all the blessings we receive from it, and all the ways that we can contribute to it. Strengthen congregations, their leaders, synods, church bodies, and all those who primarily work to magnify your name and all the earth. We name this day our presiding bishop Elizabeth Eaton, our Synod Bishop Paul Eakenstein, as well as those who serve alongside them, transforming spirit. Hear our prayer. Spirit of life, pour out your healing upon each and every one of us, those with visible and invisible ailments, and those too afraid to ask for help. We ask especially this blessing upon as well as Thomas, Kathy, Tim, Sean, Josh, Shannon, Robert, Ed, Wanda, Cliff, Nicole, Jeff, for those who have no one to name them, and those who do not know Christ's name. Transforming Spirit, hear our prayer. For all saints of all languages, tribes, and traditions, we thank you for every challenge and every joy that lies ahead. We bring our gratitude and ask your protective power. Make us one, O oh God, as only you can. Transforming spirit, yeah. hear our prayer. Here are the petitions may be offered. Give thanks this day for the vows made between Lauren and Jared yesterday and pray for them in their new life together. Into your hands we do commend all these things for which we pray, as we know with confidence that we can trust in you, Lord God, lover of our souls. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And also with you. We share a sign of peace with one another. And then you may be seated for our musical offering.
we gather together for worship, we express the thanks to God in music, prayers, and proclamations of our faith. We humbly call us to offer these gifts for the sake of God's mission in the world. Holy Lord, we bring before you the best of what we have to offer. We recognize the needs of others and the desire to make the world more good. Accept these gifts that we offer to the rich parents in your community. I use them to unite rather than divide us. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and places Give thanks and praise to Almighty and merciful God for the glorious resurrection of your Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away the sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Thank you, God. O oh God, our life, our strength, our food, we give you thanks for sustaining us with the body and blood of your Son. By your Holy Spirit, enliven us to be his body in the world, that more and more we will give you praise and serve your earth and its many people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Take this opportunity to share mission and ministry announcements. I'd ask, the, ask first if any have any announcements they'd like to share. Uh, next Sunday, we do start our summer schedule, so we are back to one service at 9.30. For some, you get an extra hour of sleep. Uh, for those who come to the later service, and they have to get up earlier. Uh, but just a reminder about that, next week is also Trinity Sunday. We celebrate our, na our name, in a sense, uh, as we begin our summer series. We are still collecting items for the Lutheran World Relief um, baby kits. Uh, there is a full list uh, on the in the back on the table uh, that has all the items that we need. You don't have to buy everything on the list, but um, anything there, or you can get money to myself or Irene, who's going to be in and out of town. Um, but you can put it in the offering plate as well, just as it makes that's what it is for. We hope to begin to put, start putting them together in mid-July, um, but we'll have a date for you soon. Also in the back, there's also a sheet about our TerraCycle program that we have resumed. Uh, this is recycling items that normally you can't put out for recycling, like makeup and shampoo bottles and um, toothpaste tubes and the like. Um, so there is a list in the back of what we do except for that. And in the closet uh, in the hallway here are bins where you can put those items in. Please empty out any lotion or shampoo bottles um, just because it makes it really messy if you don't. Um, so just a reminder about that. Um, you will be getting a letter probably in the next week. Uh, the church council is challenging the congregation uh, to help uh, with a $10,000 goal. Uh, we know our, our money, we're about four or 5000 right now um, of expenses over income. Uh, and we know summer months get even a little leaner, so we are trying to uh, not let that happen. And so the council is challenging people to give uh, whatever they are able to do that above their normal offering. Um, so you'll be getting a letter with more details about that. Um, but at this point, I have, I'm still waiting to hear back from a few council members, but we have close to $1,000 already designated by only half of the council towards that. So uh, they're putting their money where their mouth is as well. Um, so just a reminder, you'll also be getting with that letter a, a coloring sheet, because who doesn't like to color, that says filled with the Holy Spirit. And like our flat Jesus a few years ago, I'm inviting you to take this with you if you go on vacation or someplace else. Take a picture, post it to social media. If you don't have social media, send it to me and I'll post it as well. Please color it because otherwise it just looks pretty plain, right? Uh, so, so take pictures of that as you go out and about. Uh, as I await to hear whether I get a grant, we get the grant for a sabbatical for next summer. Uh, I continue to learn, to try to learn Spanish, and so I'm encouraging us each week to learn a different Spanish word. I can't get this back in there. So our word this week is espiritu. Espiritu, which means, what do you think it means? Spirit, right? <laughs> it's pretty easy. So our word then is ven espiritu santo ven. So it means come Holy Spirit come. So ven espiritu santo ven. Ven espiritu santo ven. So see, we're all learning a little bit of Spanish as we go along. Are there any other announcements? Now I invite you to stand as we conclude our worship together with God's blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be good to you. May the Lord fill you with peace, love, and much laughter. And may he set you free to celebrate the life that God has given you in all its fullness. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us join in our final hymn.
Are you going home now, huh? I don't know. 